Welcome to the Sales Prospector Show, supported by Lee, a sales rep, and a 5,000 company helping our clients grow sales by securing guaranteed appointments, qualified leads, and guaranteed contracts for their services and products across the U.S. I'm your host, Jill Pagan. You can find us on all social media channels and at leadsalesrep.com. Thank you for listening in. It's going to be a great one today. Yeah, it's going to be a great one today. We're going to have a, a great conversation with Rachel McBrearty, the uh, Chief Customer Officer of Lean Data. Uh, they're a, um, a software company based out of California, about 200 employees strong, and a lot of customers in multiple verticals. They're doing some really great stuff, uh, particularly in the sales, marketing, demand gen, tracking leads and stuff. Listen, that's the stuff that we do here uh, in our company, right? We got to track stuff. Uh, welcome to the show, Rachel. Uh, thanks for having me, Gil. It's great to be here. Yeah, looking forward to, to kind of chatting about uh, what you're doing there and the exciting stuff and uh, getting to the granular details of this software platform. Uh, I just love this kind of stuff. Uh, so uh, tell, tell us a little bit about you and um, uh, what you were doing before you landed there and what you're doing kind of like now. And we'll get into the uh, details, okay? Yeah, no, terrific. All right. So, um, yeah, I'm currently Chief Customer Officer at Lean Data. I've been here for about three years. Before Lean Data, I held some executive roles at Cisco, leading customer experience and customer insights. And that's where I really got very intrigued with how to use data and insights to really inform and drive the buying experience. I worked a lot with sales and marketing operations at Cisco. And so when, uh, when I was looking for my next career move, I really wanted to to shift into running a post-sale organization as a CCO, I saw what Lean Data was doing in how we're enabling that buying experience and it's solving a problem that we had at Cisco that we can solve. Um, so we'll talk more about that. Uh, yeah, so my organization at Lean Data, I do run what's the post-sale. So once that customer becomes a customer, um, my organization takes care of them. I have the solution consultants, professional services, customer success, support training, and customer marketing. Um, so really run that, that end to end. Uh, our key metric is net retention um, for the company. And of course, that the customer is successful, right? Because we know if the customer is successful, that's what we, that's how it earns our right to grow. We're very customer centric at Lean Data. We think first and foremost about making them successful. And that certainly has paid off. We have really great first retention and really great net retention. So I'm super proud of my team. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah, so you're on the back end. So we got the hunters going out there, uh, uh, bagging the client, closing the deal, uh, and obviously presenting your offering on the front end. And then uh, the deal is closed. And then you come along with your team and make sure that you guys execute uh, on the service offering and keep your customers and make them happy and uh, continue to grow the business. Is that accurate? That is accurate. No, that's, that's but we are accurate. in the business of helping our customers with their marketing, sales, and customer success motions around revenue growth. Mm -hmm. So that's that also means that I really do need to know the space in order to make sure that I understand our customers' needs, that we build the right kind of capabilities, and we're kind of looking ahead as to what what is going on, mm -hmm. you know, in the markets. We can bring that back into the company. So that's what I'm excited to talk about today because mm -hmm. we. You know, we spend all of our time working with sales, marketing, and CS, you know, operations professionals and, uh, and their leaders. So and that's so great. So, talk about that. No, that's excellent. So talk about the, a uh, little bit about the, uh, uh, you know, the lean data, you know, the actual platform and, um, you know, the mechanics of how that works. I remember when we chatted uh, before that you're a Salesforce provider exclusive. I'm assuming that is still accurate. Is that correct? Um, that's correct. Okay. So you're, you're, you're working with Salesforce in their ecosystem, if you will. Um, so, so the lead comes in or how does the, the software connect to Salesforce? Is it a Chrome extension? Is it a plugin? How, how does that stuff work? How does it happen? Yeah. So we are an app in the app exchange. Um, okay. the lean data, we have three main products, mm -hmm. matching, routing, and engagement. Mm -hmm. Um, so we do sit on top of that Salesforce CRM. It's a critical piece, piece of automation to have the sales, the data that's in the CRM, right? It's kind of the center of the wheel and that enables all these spokes to move. As you say, it sort of starts with matching automated workflow solution that maps the relationships between records. So for example, the most common use case is lead to account matching. So you match new leads to the correct account record in the CRM 
that allows you to optimize account-based strategies, right? You can put all the account information in the lead, you can get it to the right rep, um, you know, the right person. So you make sure you're kind of getting that, that person or account back to the individual that knows them. You can see everyone who's engaging in the account. So it's pretty critical if you're gonna be looking from an account-based perspective, which is, you know, in B2B, we sell the buying groups, right? We know the demand unit waterfall, we know how powerful account-based marketing is. Um, so matching is, is really critical. It's a foundational to any um, account-based approach. Then comes routing, okay? You've, you've made those matches and organized your data, then getting those actions out to individuals. Again, the primary use case is lead to account matching and then routing, which is that automated workflow that addresses, you know, the ability to match those accounts and then get it to the, the SDR. Um, lead data is number one solution in lead to account matching and routing. We're super proud of that. It's a new category that was established this year. Um, and so that's the, the primary, you know, way we start with customers is really, you know, enabling them to better orchestrate and get the leads into the, the hands of the SDRs. Yeah, I was looking at some of the videos uh, and um, I saw the uh, inbound um, routing kind of process and it, was, it shared an example. I'm not sure. I'm sure that it can be modified based on your own your own business needs. Uh, talked about the lead coming in, uh, then it going to the what we call the wheel. Uh, you guys call this something else, but it's basically the wheel. Who's on the wheel, right? So that goes to that that rep. If that rep doesn't respond within a certain amount of time, if that's the time you put in there, say an hour, um, you, I'm assuming you can modify the time, but but I'm assuming that's the case. You can uh, so it goes to another rep if uh, if that rep didn't respond, so that you can get to that lead because timing is important when an inbound lead comes in so you can reach them, you know, have a conversation, present, close, uh, get them into the sales process, mm -hmm. right? So that, that process, is it, is it modifiable based on your own uh, business needs and requirements? Yeah, that, that's actually, um, I think the, the secret sauce to lean data success is, hey. our, we call it our flow builder. So you've hit right on it, right? It's a no code solution with drag and drop visual interface where, you know, like a lucid chart, as you said, it's a flow chart. It really makes it easy for teams to build out and define processes. So maybe one group of SDRs, you're doing the round robin. Maybe okay. there's another group that, you know, you want to send accounts to because they're doing strategic ABM. You can set up all of those flows and whatever business rules that you and your team, you know, want to define. I, our customers say what's so great about lean data is no matter what requests they get in from the business leaders, they know they're going to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and what's also super powerful is you can go in and make those changes in minutes, um, mm -hmm. you know, if not hours, depends on the complexity of the change, where, you know, in the, if you're working in with sort of the, I mean, Salesforce provides some basic capabilities in this area and customers, you know, a lot of our customers that come to us have built out custom code that's all, you know, linear, lots of lines and going in and making changes means tickets into the IT team waiting for months, you know, IT is not exactly like, oh, we'll be quick to make this round robin change. So we take, you know, and, and that's a and primary use case for, for some of our customers, we put the power back into the hands of the business to be able to define it, you know, those rules, however they'd like. Um, we, we have tons of different kinds of capabilities to do that. So, uh, you know, and keep adding them as customers do seem to come up with new, uh, <laughs> new requests still. Yeah, no, and uh, and I hear you. So the 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 um to be clear, the platform does not is not doing lead generation because uh, um it's working with existing leads in the system. I'm assuming, and also inbound leads coming into the system because uh, people use demand gen, you know, as a term for lead gen, right? It's mm -hmm. kind of like the, the the term that's being used nowadays. So. Is that correct? It's really working with your existing leads and what's coming into the system, correct? Yes, absolutely. Okay. You can think of, I think of what we do is really orchestrating the buying experience, right? Mm -hmm. We, as a lead comes in, let's say the lead might come in because they requested a, a demo. Mm -hmm. um, okay, you want to fast track that. So we set up the, the flow to say, okay, what do we want to orchestrate based on this being a demo request? It's a hand raiser. Let's get back to them in five to 10 minutes because we know if you get back quickly, much more likely to convert. Mm -hmm. Or if a lead comes, maybe he downloads a white paper. Well, you know, give me a chance to read it. Don't call me within five minutes. It's so irritating. I need to have a chance to read the paper, right? So we want to set time limits or maybe we put them yeah. into a, a sales loft or outreach cadence. So really think of this as this. Once that 
lead comes in or that list upload or that identification, then we really help to coordinate and orchestrate at scale the automation between other systems or you know, people at the company. And that can go all the way through from not just the SDR, mm -hmm. but passing along, um, you know, those converting to contacts, passing it to AEs, you know, managing the opportunities and alerts for opportunities all the way to um, CSMs managing customers. So, you know, it is, it is about once that, that um, prospect decides to engage with you, Gil, that we, we take over. So the lead, uh, when the lead comes in, and you talked about routing, matching, and engagement, right? There's kind of like three things, okay? So the routing makes sense. You know, it comes in and then it goes to the reps on the wheel, if you will, get, with it, get back to them within an hour, whatever your parameters are and that kind of thing. The matching, I guess the matching to the right person in the organization, to the, the right salesperson, let's just say their account or uh, account executive. Um, how, how do you... How do you kind of tweak that? So if I'm if I'm running a um, a uh, 250 employee firm with 100 million dollars in sales, and it's a, I'm a technology company and I'm reaching out, is it being assigned based on size of company, middle market employees, or being assigned based on the the vertical to that person, to that matching to that rep? How is that working? That makes sense. Any of those criteria, it's whatever our customers want to lead with. To, you know, we really try to align with the way that they have operationalized their, mm. um, you know, SDR teams and the way they mm. want to respond. It can be different by different geos. So we do have customers that, you know, might be an industry group, uh, an industry team because the industries are so different. They need to have specialization. You know, it could be that it's a territory alignment. Um, it could be that it's a strategic account that goes into the that team. Mm -hmm. um, we also have clients who have you know channel partners, so they can we can identify based on criteria when it should go to the channel partner. So it can really be on any of that data that you have on the the leader you know account level, and that's the power of that account matching, um, and then you know using um, enrichment like a, you know Zoom info to you know, further fill in that data, that really gives you the power to determine what are those criteria for, for routing. So, so one, so one, that's good. That's good. Um, uh, thank you for clarifying that. So once the lead is, um, is in the ecosystem and they're, they're been assigned, what have you, and then something doesn't happen, uh, if you will, is there in your platform, um, a, um, automation, uh, drip marketing is it you know is there something in the platform that or is there another 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 service that's provided and is plugged in to your platform well when you say when nothing happens you mean the salesperson didn't respond or action wasn't taken internally yeah that... yeah for example let's say um um we try to set up a demo right uh because it was sent to the uh, a rep, rep sdr does demos and that for some reason the sdr can't get a hold of the person the demo didn't happen so now you want to stay in front of this prospect with your automation um, to get them back into the fold in a demo. So that, that's what I'm talking about. So yeah, we, we do have an integration with sales loft and outreach. So we have our customers might set up those cadences. And some of them, it's kind of crazy. Bill. They'll have hundreds of different sequences that you put customers into to nurture sure. them. Sure. So that's one of the ways in which, and then, you know, they can, they can continue. And you can also set alerts and notifications to remind the reps to do follow-ups. No, so that's great. Um, so, uh, you're, 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 you're routing, obviously the lead, um, to the right person. You're, uh, hopefully, um, they're responding within certain, uh, timeframes and criteria based on the client's need. Uh, and then if they're not responsive, the lead, if you will, then it goes into some other software platform, you know, the sales law outreach, that kind of thing, uh, to kind of stay in front of that customer prospect for the, for the future and try to get them into, um, into the funnel again and close, uh, if you will. So the, um, the verticals that, that, um, that you're playing in right now. Um, and I know that you're in tech and software and um, uh, SaaS providers, I guess, are, are one of those areas where you'll play in. Uh, what industry verticals have uh, kind of attracted themselves to you um, just based on what you're doing? And I know you're looking at certain other areas as well that you want to open up potentially, which kind of caught my interest. I'm, I'm going to take steal your thunder there. But you go ahead and share what, what verticals are responsive so far to you. Yeah, I, I think you're, you're spot on. We did start with sort of that, that fast growing SaaS software companies. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, recently, I think in the past year or so, we have certainly seen an expansion um, into other verticals. We do, we have, um, we are in telco, so Verizon, AT&T, 
uh, our customers. Um, and, but we also work with the likes of WeWork and Toast. Uh, Calm just signed on. They're the that meditation app. Uh, so we're you seeing say meditation. Is that what you the said? meditation app, Calm. Really? <laughs> they just joined. So uh, yeah, we work. We work across. We've got travel and hospitality. Um, I I highlight them because they really went through so much, and we've really helped to partner with them to kind of weather the whole whole COVID storm. But it's a smattering across B two B. You know, I think it does. It is when the company does have more of a B two B component than it is a pure, you know, B two C play. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. That's really our strength. Most B2, yeah, and I know that you are looking at some maybe other uh, areas, you know, for the growth of the business as well. And um, and I think that you had mentioned maybe some retail, um, and we like that space, um, and uh, for various reasons. Um, and we sell vendors, we sell vendor services into retail. Um, so I know it's an interesting uh, vertical. Um, don't know where you guys are with that, but that's part of the expansion and going and looking at different markets. Yeah, and I think it's how how you start thinking about you know a lot of what we've spent our time really solving for is that you know buying group um, and account match. Uh, but you know as we get into you know, we've really built out a lot of capabilities around speed to lead, which is just hey get that individual dealt with right away, right? So the faster you can you can uh, address them, you know, with SLAs built in. So I think you know that we have lots of capabilities that we can expand, and we are starting to bring some. Uh, retail teams on board and, and exploring with them, you know, how we can expand the, the no, it's a, Yeah, that's design. exciting. That's exciting. So from a customer perspective, um, who's the ideal customer? I mean, can you help a small company that has, you know, uh, 10 employees? I mean, can you help? Obviously, you can help middle market and enterprise, right? There's no question there. But how small can you go and the cost of the service in relation to where it makes sense for the business? Where you say, hey, it's too small. It's not really going to work for you. Right. So what, what are your yeah. thoughts on that? Um, well, our customer portfolio is extraordinarily broad. We've, you know, from a sales perspective, we have two different sales teams, one that's focused enterprise, the other commercial, because we really have almost like two different businesses. Mm. You know, we can serve a very small company and get them set up very quickly. Mm. Uh, and then they can avoid hiring anybody who has to manage any of the data, the leads and the flows. So Small businesses love us because it avoids a, a headcount that's just going to be sort of on the back end doing data management anyway. Um, so we're very cost effective um, in that regard. Uh, so we do have a lot of small businesses, emerging companies, fast growing companies that we work with. So I have a team even on the customer success side that works with those companies. They tend to be more self-serve. Um, it's pretty simple, I always say. You know, it's kind of like if I want to download a fitness app, I don't really need anyone to help me download it or tell me what my criteria are. I kind of know it and I can do it myself. So we have a so self-serve um, motion for those customers all the way up to very large enterprise, the Zoom, DocuSign, um, Google, Facebooks of the world, which are doing, you know, pretty complex routing rules globally. So it's a very diverse portfolio and we do have pricing models that makes it very much uh, a value to to all of those constituents. In fact, I'll do a plug. We just did a big ROI study with Hobson and Company, um, talking to all of our customers about the value they found in lead data, um, and uh, yeah, we definitely are getting a huge return on the investment, and that's super important for us, right? That's what we're here to do. No, that's great. So it's a SaaS model. Um, is there a contract, or you just they sign up and they pay the monthly? Let's say the monthly fees thousand bucks per month they just sign up and they pay that monthly fee and they just go as as needed correct yeah we actually it's a, a pricing model is based on usage and it's annual oh so it's an annual contract yeah it's an annual okay, so they have to yeah. sign up for the year yeah basically okay gotcha so right away that is a filtering process right just, just by nature just by its nature by doing that um yeah. you're gonna have a uh you're gonna filter out you know from the funnel some of the businesses that just can't do that uh and that's okay that's you know that's, that's, the, that's the model you know, no, but price. you know how it is, though. You are we not always constantly looking at pricing and patching models as we evolved? I think it's probably time for us to do that. Honestly, mm -hmm. um, we've been talking about it, but it's almost like every couple of years you got to reevaluate based on where the business is going, and right. certainly want to, you know, not have any barriers to, to getting some of those, you know, some, um, emerging companies onto our platform. No, ab absolutely, absolutely. I know that you, you're looking at expanding at some point, not right now, um, the CRM ecosystem. You want to 
maybe add some other CRM at some point um, because everybody's not using Salesforce uh, and um, we don't use it. So, uh, you know, uh, and there's various reasons why, um, but um, uh, we, we found for our business, there's a, a other CRM that are better for our business. Um, so uh, I'm assuming you guys are looking at that probably more aggressively now. Is that safe? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they got, Mark has a lot of comp, um, you know, Mark Benoff, that's the, the, the CEO of, uh, yeah. of a sales I, Yeah. I think, I think that, uh, and again, that's always things that you talk about. I think it's of always course. a matter of when, um, yeah. you know, when you feel like you've sort of reached a saturation point in a current market and, you know, need to sort of move into that next, next step. So how does uh, the moving to the next step? So how does someone engage with, with, with lean data? So uh, we, you know, clients, for example, so they're going to call, they're going to fill out a form. They're going to speak to somebody. I'm assuming you're using it for your own self. <laughs> you're going to speak to somebody right? using your own platform to serve customers. So yeah. they're going to, you're going to fill out a form, make a phone call. They're going to, it's going to get routed. Um, it, tell us the process. You're going to get to an SDR based on company size and do a demo. Help us understand that process to reach out to you and your team. Yeah, no, I think you pretty much nailed it. Um, we do uh, we do a lot more outbound than I think we have inbound. Okay. Um, in part, we have we've had a lot more inbound since lead to account matching and routing has kind of come up as a category. But you know, and we really have had uh, more of a challenge of just letting everybody know that we solve a problem that they have. They don't often search to solve this problem. Um, you know, that's when you any, have any new innovation that's sort of in a net new category, that's sort of part of the, the fun. So we have strong outbound processes where we can align to those target accounts that we think are going to be the best ones to buy. Um, and then, yes, it's an SDR motion paired with that AE. We have a pretty highly consultative process. So I have the solution consultants in my organization in part because we really want to understand the customer's goals. I mean, given the flexibility of the you know, flow builder, we, you know, want to make sure that, that the customer, um, we understand and can get the customer up quickly. You know, I think what we found in, in the selling process, and I think it's probably the same for many companies, it's so important for customers to feel like you can get them there, mm -hmm. right? And that they, we have a good onboarding process, that they're in the hands of the solution consultant who works closely with the, you know, professional services team, Kind of moves from pre-sale to post-sale to ensure that they feel like they can get up and running quickly and that's super important and these days right if we know that we can you know get some of these small we talked about the small companies get them up up and using lean data within a couple of weeks is pretty phenomenal so they yeah. start to realize those benefits immediately no that that um that that's that's excellent so typical sales process which a lot of organizations that are SaaS models they do that um, goes into the funnel. You're doing a lot of outbound prospecting, obviously, because of, of the newness of this. Uh, right. They're not searching for account lead um, routing. <laughs> it's not. It's no, not. they're not really. <laughs> I, know, I know you got you got you got to present it and and uh, and attack the prospects that will be good for you. So uh, I I totally get it. Um, so tell us a little bit about about um, about you. This is the the rapid fi uh, fire questions um, about you. Uh, and um, so, are you are you a um, uh, uh, an Android or an iPhone person? iPhone. iPhone. Okay, so that means that you probably have a iPad and a, a Mac. I do have an so iPad you, and a Mac. So you so you do all all, all the, the the whole. I got people, we got people that do Android and Mac. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, uh, cool, cool. So tell us about uh, your coffee habits. Are you are you a hot coffee drinker or not? Oh, you're hitting on all my favorite things from Apple products to coffee. Yeah, we have a, a restaurant grade machine in the house. So I make my espresso every morning. It's like a seven step process. Gil and like order special beans. Uh, we actually have friends who we roast beans in the garage of their house. So wow. we are hardcore coffee. Wow. <laughs> so, so yeah, definitely hot, definitely hot coffee. That's great. Um, uh, what about, uh, what about pizza? Pizza? Yes or no? Uh, did you look me up? No. Okay. So you are, I have uh, we bought about a year and a half ago, a wood burning pizza oven. <laughs> My son is very into pizza. He's been studying pizza and pizza making, he knows all wow. the pros. He's been to pizza conferences. He's 17, by the way. 
Wow. Uh, so we bought a big wood burning oven right when COVID hit. Wow. It's 5,000 pounds, um, big tiled, sitting in the middle of our backyard. And so wow. we have been making pizzas for the past 18 months. Wow. I, um, I, I... I have not looked at any of this stuff, but that's a, it's a, it's a part of our <laughs> questioning. Wow. Um, that, that's really cool. Uh, if you, um, if you, uh, had uh, the ability to go anywhere, um, to travel time and money, not an issue. Where would you go? New Zealand to visit my sister. Okay. Wow. That's a, that's a, that, that's a nice trip. Um, yeah, New Zealand. Okay, great. That's the first one I've heard that one before. Um, if, uh, if you were given, um, a, a superpower, if you had a superpower, um, doesn't have to be work-related. It could be, it could be personal. It doesn't really matter. Um, what kind of superpower would you want? Um, what would that be? I would love to be able to be invisible once in a while. Um, I think that'd be kind of fun. Just kind of. I think because I'm a little bit of an introvert uh, and by that I really get energy from alone time. Um, and I have three children and two dogs, two cats, two rabbits and a horse. So, and a husband and really great neighbors who come over all the time. So sometimes I wouldn't mind being able to just kind of disappear a little bit and get five or 10 minutes. Wow, well, wow. <laughs> that, that sounds like a really busy lifestyle. Um, so the, um, the all right, when you're, when you're listening to, when you're working out, or if you do work out, you know, you ride a bike, whatever you do, are you listening to a podcast? Are you listening to the radio, music? What, what, are, you, what are you listening to? Yeah, I, um, if I'm out running, I like to, to listen to music because it makes me keep kind of my, my pace up. Um, I took up running during COVID. I never ran before. I didn't like to run, but, you know, was, kids were like, come on, we'll go out and run. So now I run a little. Um, but yeah, the music keeps me going. I don't want to hear my heartbeat and the fact that I, you know, the feet pounding. Uh, I listen to podcasts in the car. I do listen to a lot of podcasts, but I tend to do that while I'm driving. I gotcha. When you're reading, when you're reading a book, are you using, uh, are you using um, uh, the paper version or are you using a, on the iPad? Oh, I like the paper version still. Old I do school. have a Kindle or my husband does, I borrow it, but I do just like holding that book and walking around with it. I'm Call me old fashioned. I worked in publishing for 10 years, at the beginning of my career, doing book design. Um, so I just love, I love books. I have lots of books. Yeah, I got you. Uh, I, I, I totally understand that. I agree. Um, well, 30 second uh, wrap up on the value prop of lean data uh, and how um, they can help companies streamline their process, get leads closed faster, um, uh, and get you know people processing the funnel. 30 seconds on the wrap up. Great, yeah, so and what's key uh, for lean data uh, for our customers is really think about us as helping to automate and orchestrate your buying experience. Mm -hmm. You may think of us as, you know, hey, can optimize lead flow, lead management, data management, but really the magic that we do is yes, we do help you do all of those things and automate your SDR processes and your operations processes, but the magic really is as a result, the improvement of that buying experience. And that's what's really key to revenue growth and improving conversion. Excellent. Love the conversation. We've been chatting with Rachel McCreerty, the uh, Chief Customer Officer of Lean Data. We enjoy the conversation. I just uh, love having these kind of discussions. You guys are doing some great stuff there. Listen, uh, may you be successful this year and next year. May you have a breakout year and everything that you specifically implement be successful going forward. Oh, thank you, Gil. Thanks for having me on. You're welcome. Enjoy the conversation. Thanks. Me too. Thanks.